Hello and welcome to my shop. This is Jim Dedman, Sawlogs Plastic Hubs. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, we'll be doing something interesting. So uh, hang around, let's have fun. Okay, today's video, uh, yeah, or this video is going to be about a project. And I'm just going to kind of hit the high spot right quick. This is my parting rig that I'm using on my Grizzly. And I'm this flat not happy with it. The biggest thing wrong with it is you see the amount of hangouts you've got. <coughs> so this morning I've been on the bench with the scale and doing some calculations because I want a solid one piece block. So all this is one piece on my uh, that. And I'm going to reuse this clamp because I like the way this is made. So what I've got here is a piece of steel out of my scrap bin. And we're going to machine this sucker down. And we're going to make us a tool holder. Now what I'm going to, is, this is going to be fairly simple as, you know, as far as machining goes. Square the block up good. True it. And then once we true it, then we're going to go ahead and we'll roll it over and cut this slot in it and then we're going to roll it back over and cut a dovetail in the other end and use our quarter inch screw so but before I start the mill work I've got a little bit of lathe work to do and uh, well I must well probably throw it the slot the, uh, the lathe work I gotta make an adjust I've got no adjusters so I gotta make a couple of them the reason I gotta make a couple is sometime soon my viewer and friends gonna come down from the road one day and we're gonna be fixing this tool holder and I need an extra one so I'm gonna do that off camera so I'll be ready when we get to that point
Okay, this is a setup to cut the 45 degree bevel. It's got to be on the back side of this for this clamp to be able to squish down. This area here you see is going to be where the dovetail goes. Basically what I've done is reduced the size of this whole block and remachining everything around it. Now one of the things I'm going to do is we're going to do this and I'll get started and make the first pass and uh, see how things look. So we'll bring you back so get some more in there. Again, this is what we're doing is taking 30 thousandths of pass and just getting the angle on it. Now, I have a relief put in the bottom and I'm actually hitting the bottom a little bit. So what we're doing is literally feeding back and forth about 30 thousandths of pass. The reason I'm using 30 thousandths is I don't want to, again, this is a quarter inch milling cutter. We're getting down in there on a quarter inch milling cutter and it's not a lot of room to work, so we have to be a little careful. So I'm just taking 30 a pass. I'll show you one more when I get a 30 dialed in. And uh, we'll work from there. And actually you're taking more than 30 when you're doing this. What I'm going to do is just take the calipers and I measure the top after it's finished to get basically the dimension I'm looking for. The way that I set it 45 is just using a 45 degree parallel to bring it up to do this to be setting up two other parallels in the box. This doesn't have to be extremely accurate for the minute, it's just got to be there. I'm going to prime meal back, then I'll check it, clean it out, check it, measure it, see what it looks like, and then we'll make the next pass until we get it real warm. Okay, now we got it. I had to go back and get a, 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 another drill. Another the one I had needs sharpening, or it might just be a weak drill. <coughs> See, the drills I got, I really have no idea what quality some of them are, because they all come. So some of them could be a cheap import that was just in the pile. Whoa! So now these are drilled out to where I'll deburr it in a second. And these are drilled now for the quarter. The way I'm going to do this is, I'm going to... We're going to be so deep. Uh, this is a quarter. We're going quarter 28 on these. A little departure from my normal style of doing things. I've got a lot of quarter 28 Allen screws in the, in the shop. So uh, it behooves me to use them. So I'm going to set a stop. Uh, the truth here is also, by the way, I'll, just, I'll stop the not work, is I'm not against metric, but I don't have all the metric taps, and I don't have some of the really good ones. So instead of me having to go through the gyrations of using these, I'm going to actually put, the only thing I'm going to use out of the original block is the clamp, because it's sort of a specialty thing. I don't want to go through the trouble of machining another one. I'm going to use my original clamp. I mean, you know, these blocks, uh, these are like $60, $70 blocks. Or maybe even less than that, depending on where you get them. And these, the tools, so I'm thinking it's going to help. Part of the rigidity and chatter problem, it, it can't hurt it. It may not solve it. One of the things I will tell you that uh, about is, I think, the, I, I'll tell you another thing that I've 
I've run into before and I had real good luck with it's hard to find them is is the larger blades the thicker blades that take the two to threes you can but they're a lot more expensive and the thicker the blade helps a lot because you got more rigidity under the tool and I've taken the thicker blade on when I had my other lathe and actually had a tool made for it with a thicker blade and I let the whole thing go when I sold the other lathe now what I'm going to do here is blow this out and cut this I'm going to fix the screw and all this because I'm going to actually use that to line them up with what I've done is I've just lined this up like this so that it, this will actually go right down in the hole where the other drill was and then that way I'm going to be right on it so so this allow me to I'll check it when I put this drill in make sure it, it tightens up enough to, to give me what I'm looking for when I put it down in there make sure it looks somewhat in the center if it's off a little, it'll show up right there. Yeah. That looks pretty good to me. Okay. Put it back in high gear. And we'll just spot this one right off. Okay. Yeah. This way I'm going to be on, that way I know for sure that everything's going to line up. I don't have no questions. Instead of trying to figure all the math up and taking guesses and, you know, which you could theoretically measure everything out and do, doing it this way, I know that I'm going to be correct. <laughs> and then I can just do each and every one of them the way they need to be done. And that way I line each hole up there be no question. So we we'll get it drilled out. And we'll finish drilling the rest of it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is where we're at now. This is the block that all the, the front end work's done on, as I'm going to call it. The front end work, meaning the the everything to put the tool in so this is basically it now the next step will be putting the dovetail and the adjuster in and we'll be finished with it so that's what it looks like and if you'll notice now you begin to see what I'm saying this is going to be a, once it's done your dovetail is going to be here this is going to be locked closer to the block it's just a bit thinner here but it's not that much to matter because it's just a little bit of bottom support which they had for clearance which we'll give it with the blade so with that being said we'll uh, put her together finish her up maybe tomorrow I've got some errands to run in the morning so maybe tomorrow we'll be back in the shop and finish this thing up now what I've done is this I found the center and you'll see that's the center there and let me cut this off and that's the center. Now the way I like to cut dovetails, and you know, it just kind of varies. If something like this block, I'll go back to the block and point it out to you. On something like this block where I've got two defined edges, then I want a zero point which is dead in the center. Okay, there's my numbers. Basically the, the 330 is how much I offset each side on the x-axis in a mill, 420 thousandths is going to be the depth from right here to right there. And that's the slot before we dovetail. Okay, here we go. This is the setup. Now the dovetail cutter's in. Everybody knows I use one of Randy Richards in the shop cutters. And the way that this is going to work is basically I'm going to double check my tightnesses and everything. I've set my dovetail cutter approximately five to six thousandths off the damn bum bottom. So you'll have a little bit of a step room to work. And and after that, so this is where beginning zero comes into play. That way we know how much we're again how much to move off each side. 
normally in this case it's somewhere around hundred thousandths, but you can't be too sure. So now we'll start to work the dovetail in. There you go. That's the preliminary fit right there. Now what you have to do when you cut these dovetails, you'll cut them to size. Then you really need something to fit them to. Uh, I actually have an extra of the original tool post that's a piston type to come off of my lathe and I use it to fit. So basically I had to cut these probably some for about three thousandths or so, maybe four over my sample piece. But that's what you got to do. Sometimes it fits. I ain't never quite understood why that is sometimes. I think the dovetails are a little different on your angles or something may be part of it. So anyway, now all I got to do is put the adjuster on it. So I'm going to break for lunch and come back. Okay, now we're doing the finishing up. I'm going to go ahead and I centered everything's on center from here, from here to here, to there, to there. And I'm just on barely, it's going to work with that quarter 20 rod down through it. So we're going to get that quarter 20 rod down in there and drill it and tap it quarter 20. And get our rod cut and our part put together and blued up and ready to adjust it up. Well, there it is. Completely finished. Mounted on the machine. Now, we'll just have to see how this works. Okay, we're going to see how this thing does. This is a trial run. We'll see. This piece of threaded rod I got out of my scrap bin. I'm going to turn the power feed on and we're going to let it go in there and see what happens. soft steel. Nothing real exact, you know, nothing really elaborate. This plain threaded rod is, is usually something like 1018 anyway, so. There it is. Tuck it off just as neat as you can see. And I've done that with feed on, by the way. Okay. Um, I hope you enjoy it. There's the finished product, and this is a comparison. That thing's a good, I don't know, we'll, to, we'll go over to the bench and clear, we'll, we'll clear a spot off on the mill and we'll check it. On the mill table, side by side is what I was using and the new one I just finished completing. Basically, I took this one and kind of made a copy and shortened it up. So the overall width of it, if I can get down there to it, to kind of make it a little crooked there for us. The overall width of the original is just a little over two inches, 140 thousandths. And you can see right there, so if I can get down to the same bottom spot there. So right there, that is an inch, 830. So you can see the difference just right there, pretty much. That's a good quarter of an inch. That's over a quarter inch. It's close to a half inch. Everything else is pretty much the same. This might be a bit taller. Uh, of course, you know I use quarter 20 hardware to do all the inside hardware and all that. So, this, so we're going to try this a while. Maybe do a later video comparing the two. So, I hope you enjoyed this. It's a project I've been wanting to do for a while because it's been bugging me. I hope you enjoyed the video. So, uh, let's put a disclaimer out of the way. This video is my idea how to do things. It's not uh, uh, the only way. So, I hope you enjoyed it today. The other thing, comments are always welcome. Please take the time if you feel so inclined to make a comment on my videos. Also, I appreciate all my subscribers, the new ones and the new ones. And finally, the other disclaimer. This is a copyrighted production of James Dedman, Saw Logs Plastic Hubs, for your enjoyment on YouTube. Thank you. Have a great day, and we will see you in the next video.